Hi there and welcome back to the channel and to another model inbox review. Today we have got the Meng Jagged Panther Aus G1. Uh, this is of course a very very sort of uh, iconic piece of armour which uh, was used by the Nazis in World War II throughout the war. Um, I think it first appeared around late 1940. 41, 42, forgive me if I'm not quite spot on with the dates, but certainly in 1942, 43 it became operational and became a very, very uh, common sight on battlefields in the Eastern Front uh, against the Russians and also, of course, in Normandy and beyond uh, Belgium, Normandy, Holland into Germany, etc., for the end of the war. Now, I haven't made a Meng armour kit before, I've made uh, one of their aircraft kits. I made the Messerschmitt ME163B which I really enjoyed and it looks beautiful so I quite rate them um, but they sometimes still have the odd issue with fit and things like that so <clears throat> sometimes they can be a little bit I think like Edouard where they are very very um, beautifully moulded but they don't always go together absolutely dead easily but we shall see uh, at a later date and on that subject I should just pause here and just say um, all too often you see model reviews online and people rave about it. Okay, that is absolutely fantastic. And I'm thinking, I'm not picking on Edward. It's true with Airfix as well, uh, and others. Um, and you can you can look on the sprues at the model, and then when you actually come to build it, <laughs> it could be completely different from what you expect. Um, so it's the point I'm making is it's very easy to easy is not the right word, but having detailed fine panel lines and beautiful moulding is all well and good but if the kit doesn't go together very well then you haven't really as a manufacturer done your, done your homework I don't think and this is why I'm a big fan of Tamiya for example and um, you know they really do get that balance much better they may not have the most perfect riveting and but it always goes together well and I do like that so yeah the Ming, the Ming was a bit like that it was um, it wasn't a major issue, but there was there was problems with the wings, so yeah, it makes me a little bit nervous. But we will see what we got in the box, and let's open this with an open mind. Let's see what on earth we have. There we go. Out of the way. So I do like the Jag Panther though. I think it's a real mean-looking machine. Uh, on the side, we've got the AK Interactive uh, callouts. I'm not sure why they've gone to AK. It used to be um, MIG normally. But who cares? Move that aside, see what we got. So, plenty of plastic in the box. Let's just put that out of the way so that we don't crown out the picture in reflections. All I'll do is I'll have a crack at the instructions, etc. first. I never do it the same twice, so sometimes I look at the kit, sometimes I look at the decals, and sometimes I look at the instructions first. Anyway, <clears throat> let's get into what we have here. So, we have got a colour call out painting sheet, which is fine, quite nice. Let's zoom you in so you can see it properly. Yes, this looks quite good. So, we've got the Battle of the Ruhr, March 1945, right at the end of the war. That's quite a nice scheme. Okay. Yeah, interesting. And then we've got the Ardennes 1944. Uh, Battle of the Bulge, I guess. That's a very unusual scheme, and I, I guess it's to try and. Oh, okay, it's, it's basically. Hmm, looks a little bit like tree trunks, doesn't it, with snow on them? That's the idea, I think. A bit different. Not seen that scheme before. Uh, Western France, here we go. This is more your Normandy. No, typical Normandy scheme here, very much like what we're used to. And then we've got uh, another Normandy scheme, uh, again it's like a variation with perhaps a little bit thicker uh, version of the same sort of colourings really. Very nice. That's quite a good guide. Then we've got the instructions, Meng German Tank Destroyer. And it gives a little bit of history about the the vehicle, and then we crack on into the instructions. We start off here with the uh, the wheels. That's going to be many many wheels, eight 
eight road wheels per side, two sprockets, two drive wheels. Um, it's sort of a semi bathtub style of main hull construction as you can see and then we've got the idlers and the drive wheels being or their locations being uh, included and attached to the main hull then the swivel swing arms and I've got a feeling that I've got a feeling that on this kit it's got fully working tracks. Now there are two sides to fully working tracks. It's good and it's very bad. It's good because it looks really realistic and you can move it along you can see the suspension working and the wheels moving and it's brilliant. The bad thing is it takes zillions of hours because you're going to have to build the tracks link by link. Anyway, you can see here that you've got the top and bottom of the main hull going together, fairly straightforward. Then the wheels go on, and it's telling you not to glue them. I think that's right. Is that the not to glue sign that Meng use? No cement, yes. So I think that we're going to have those so that they are, so they have a poly cap. Poly cap in the middle? Yes. Yes, I'm right. They have poly cap. So, yeah, you'll have fully working wheels and, and tracks. <coughs> What I like makes me smile is this bit. It's like, oh, because I saw it and I thought this is why I was wondering why it had work, whether it had working tracks or not. Glue that to that. Yeah, and it, it's as though this comes already prepared. Like, no, it means that one, that one, that one. It means there's going to be many, many tracks. Be warned. <laughs> anyway, then we've got the front of the armour. Um, protection of the driver and then we've got drilling holes for various fittings of um, tools and weapons and all sorts of things later and a little bit of detail work preparation for things that have got to be stuck to the hull then we've got the exhausts going on the back in true panther style it actually reminds me of the king tiger as well it's very similar to that and then we've got various different options on the exhaust depending on which version you produce it. So obviously there are a lot of variations about that. Uh, then we have got the uh, various hull storage boxes and spare fuel tanks at the back. And then we've got the uh, side rails going on and various hull parts, filters, covers and the engine access hatches here. All looks good to me. So then we've got various attachment points, fixtures and fittings, tools, storage boxes on the side, accessories, barrel cleaning rods. It's quite a lot of uh, parts to go on there actually. Axes, spades, you name it. And then you've got the towing cables going on and you've got the main rear hatch cover, access hatch. Of course, it doesn't have a rotating turret, it's not a tank. Uh, storage boxes on the back of the hatch, back of the hull, various um, armoured roof compartments showing the various periscopes and things. Here they go, and then the actual access hatches on the top. Okay, the roof goes on, then you're going to start working on the, the front of the gun mantlet. And then we go to the gun itself. Now we'll have a look at the moulding on this. I'm not sure whether I'll be replacing this with a metal one or not. We shall see. Different gun mantlets. Three different options, would you believe? Incredibly. Um, they all look familiar to me, actually. And then we've got the actual attachment of the gun to the mantlet. And then finally the gun barrel assembly itself. And you put, oh sorry, I forgot to mention you've got these side skirts as well that protect the tracks from around to hitting the tracks and taking them off. Gun barrel goes on, job done. Right, there we go. Now then, let's have a look here. First up, we've got Ming Photo Etch, 
Um, now that feels, it feels heavy, I can tell you, that weighs a ton. But the, um, yeah, this is one of the things that men do really quite nicely, if I'm honest. Looking good. It's got the, uh, the radio aerial there. Various uh, grills and covers. Round ones here. Looks good. Obviously there's not much in the way of decals on this. Not a problem. Now these are all bags. Should I unbag it or not? I think we won't actually. I think we'll keep it in the bag. Um, the sprue looks very nice. There's no sign of any any great flash here. Yeah, a bit. The rear there. Uh, rear panel. Stowage boxes. The main chassis. Wood guards. It's good. Here we've got the side panel. Very flat and smooth. Side panels, here are these, here are these gun mantlets we've just been talking about in the instructions. Here we go. Now then. Yep, looks familiar, doesn't it? That's one option. Then there's a more smooth one that hasn't got the big the big bolts in it. Got the gun barrel here. Which is actually moulded in one piece. So that's quite good. That means we're not going to end up with a nasty we're going to end up with a nasty seam. We've got a one-piece barrel. And we've got the access hatches at the top. Lovely engine. Looking good. And we've got more gun mantlets, look. Yet more of them. Look at that. Page money takes your choice. Each one seems slightly different to the other. We've got the back of the barrel. I'm just going to zip you slightly. the back of the gun barrel assembly itself and we've got another gun barrel so that's interesting, another moulded gun barrel there's actually more than one option there um, the actual shroud around the gun uh, mantlet itself which protects the barrel from the side shot and then we've got various parts of the gun barrel assembly it looks like you can assemble it in sections as well. And there are several versions available here. And then you've got these are the poly caps, these looks like a centipede. Looks very good. No flash. Looks nice. Now then, we've got the main bottom of the hull and the side plates. The mounting all your suspension on. And we've got some interesting Items for the side, tools and things. Look at that, you've got tools there. You've got bolt cutters. You've got, looks like a um, starter handle. There's a spade. There's all manner of things. Lots of tools and accessories. Towing eyes. This is, for the, this is for the towing cable, of course. That'll be on the end of the cable. Very, very nice. Oh yeah, we've got the uh, machine gun cover as well. Machine gun port. Looks good. And I've got a twin pack of the same. And this is, oh, starting to get into the zillions and zillions of parts here now. Oh, look at this. I, th I smell tracks here, links, many, many, many parts, and all the wheels. I mean, they look great. I've got to say that the uh, the moulding is um, fabulous. There's no flash, and nicely detailed. You know, right down to the little bolts that are in the wheel. You've got your radiator and engine covers here for the fan. Any fans. You've got the drive and idler wheels. Looks really nice. Oh, it looks like a really good fun build. And then finally, oh, oh I knew it. Oh, brace yourselves here. Brace yourselves. That's right. It's track time. And it looks like there's about 40 million track parts. Oh dear. 
Yeah, now this is interesting because um, other manufacturers have started to go away from this. Um, not because it doesn't look great and it's so realistic, that is a given. But it does take, there's three screws there, oh lordy. It's going to take a lot, a lot, a lot of time. But I mean, the, the moulding is beautiful, you know. Look at the part, look at the. This is how they get a high part count that they boast about, you know, when they're advertising. Say, we've got 500 parts. Just look at the beautiful kit with 500 parts and it's only, you know, £45. Uh, but the problem is you've got to put all this together. <laughs> and that can be more than a challenge. Uh, I'm not sure that this is good for people's mental health right at the moment, to be fair. So... <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this kit. I, I mean, I haven't built it, and I say you should always qualify every review like the ones I do. You always just hold back a final bit of judgment until you've built it. Uh, and really, what you should do is a second review about the build at the end. Because otherwise, you're only really hearing half the story. And many manufacturers do this, you know, on the sprue, it's absolutely brilliant, and then you come to get the glue out and you think, the person that designed this kit has never built it at the end because they'd have modified it. Anyway, we're not criticising this kit, it looks absolutely great. Uh, and I thought I actually got this for a very good price, I think I paid £30 for it, and that's well below list, so uh, I got a bargain, so I'm not complaining. And it, it just looks nice, I think that I'm building a really impressive, imposing kit, and it will look the business. So, there we go, there you have it. So that is the, the main Yag Panther House G1. Hope you enjoyed the vid. Uh, something a bit different. Um, nice kit for your collection that. And you can also get versions of this that have got a full interior, uh, full engine detail, etc. And uh, all the manufacturers are available, but no, I quite like Ming, I must admit. I think that they, um, they do make a very, very nice kit. So there we go. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, There'll be more reviews coming along soon. Um, I'll be doing another tank very, very soon. You can perhaps compare the two in terms of the style of manufacture. And it'll be quite interesting to see that, I think. Uh, in the meantime, yes, I think I'd recommend this to you. Certainly, if you can get it at a nice price like I did. Uh, no reason, you know, what's not to like. I think it'll build, it'll build fine and it'll look like a nice Jag Panther. So, recommended. Thanks very much for joining me. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope to see you again soon. Uh, when there will be more videos coming along to entertain you hopefully in the near future. In the meantime, look out yourselves, stay safe, and thanks very much, and bye for now.